What's up, cats and cubes? It's your girl, Queen T, and I'm back with another video. So, as y'all can tell by the title, today I'm going to be creating a prayer board. So, charge your phone, put your crowns on, eat some popcorn, and enjoy this video. I holla! So I have my prayer board. Super excited. On this specific part, I was writing down why I wanted my prayer board to look like, going into details, and what kind of prayers I was going to write down. So each guest had got a note card, and mine said, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5. And I had another one that says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Luke 17, through 6. Your sister sins against you, rebuke them, and if they repent, forgive them. Even if, the, even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will, and it will obey you. I'm going to read five one more time. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as, a, as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. So, right here, I have to increase more so than your battles that you are going through. So, just right here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass out uh, mustard seeds to every table. And you just take a piece to take. It's going to be one mustard seed. Faith is small. Seed. It's going to be one mustard seed, and you just take it to your board. Okay? Into isolation. And that's a really... That's a really, 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 really great question because I think so often we mix the two up. So often we mix mix the two up. Like, girl, I'm just going through a season of isolation. And it's not that you're going through a season of isolation. It's just that you frustrated with the season you're in, so it's easy to just pull away from everything and everybody because you're not liking where you are. Um, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is sometimes it is God pulling you away, but more, li more than likely it's us getting in the way of what he's trying to do. You know, and so sometimes the enemy will deceive us into saying, you know, you need to, you, you go home, think about it. You go home and all these intrusive thoughts coming in your head and you're dealing with this and you're dealing with that. And I'm talking from experience because there's been times where I've been so into me not into G, into me and how I was feeling and the emotions that I was dealing with. So I ain't fooling with nobody. And God, and knowing I need to be in community and I need to be in people. And anybody that knows me knows that I thrive in community. Isolation, unless it's God, it, it hinders me, you know, because I, I, God has called me to people. Yeah. But I think there are seasons when he will pull you away because there's some things he can only pour into you when he has you one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be, the, the key word in it is discerning. Everything is kind of like um, I'm big on the average, you know, but it's kind of like a garden. I think about a garden and what has to happen with a garden in order for the core to be fruitful. You gotta have good soil. Yes, and you gotta have somebody tilling, tilling it. You gotta pull the weeds out, and that's what our relationship with the Lord is like. We have to, we have to allow Him to continue to work in our garden. Like Lord, as it says in John 15, abide in Him. And if you abide in him, he's, he's going to be the one tilling your garden. He's going to be the one working everything out, pulling the dead things away so that the plants can live and be fruitful and thrive. And so just tilling your garden and letting God do what only he can do. Pretty you have something to share with you? Um, I think that one of the, one of the impediments <clears throat> to that taking place was uh, me not feeling worthy or me, you know, like, I got to do this in order for God to love me, or I have to, you know, and he has given us this gift mm -hmm. that we oftentimes, I mean, we know we don't deserve it, but we don't know how to accept it. Yeah. Um, and so I think that after I went through that process of just accepting that, yeah, I'm so up, and mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to be so up, and God loves me anyway, yeah. and he has given me this gift, and all I have to do is accept it, um, you know, allow Better than having great people in your life. 
And one of my biggest prayers is, Lord, surround me with gospel-centered community. You have to be specific with your prayer and what you're designed for the Lord, from the Lord. And so you, it's easy to have community, but it's another thing to have gospel-centered community. You need people that when you can't see Christ, they're going to point you back to him. Um, and so I, I try to fashion my life in the sense that, God, I want to be what I desire. So what I desire in friendship, I try to be to others. And sometimes you won't always get, you won't always receive what you pour out, but you know that whatever you're pouring out, God is going to pour back into you. And it may not come from that person, but the way you allow yourself to have great community is to, and this is a key point, is to know that you can't hold people to a standard um, that, because people have the capacity to hurt you. And so in some capacity, everybody in your life, there, nobody is Jesus. Somebody, they're going to hurt you because we all have the capacity to hurt one another. I think the key in that is saying because it is so life-giving when you have those people around. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, having great people. Now, this is the last question that I have unless somebody has some more. But this question says, and this is a good one, what are some tips to help me keep to stay abstinent until marriage. Mm -hmm. Pray, let's just start off with this. Stay prayed up. Stay prayed up, for sure. Um, I would say to just surround yourself with people that um, are, are supportive of what you're doing and don't compromise your standards or what you're doing and know that God is walking with you. Ultimately, we, before we get married to whatever our spouses are, we are, he is our groom. And so he is preparing you just like um, he is preparing whoever, you know, he has designed for you. And so just being clear and, and working on self, you know, work on your uh, relationship with God in the meantime. I always tell people when they get married, like, just focus on you and building you. And God is going to build wherever your spouse is and then allow for him to bring, you know, the two together. Because uh, I know people, you know, you want to rest the process because it looks great, but it's, you know, yeah. that's what? Stay praying. Yes. I think prayer is key. And if I could, I believe in being transparent. If I could be honest, my my goal was to stay asking until I got married. Did it happen that way? No. Peer pressure because I felt like I was the only one that had me got in the way and all those things and then I met George and we were nowhere <laughs> near where we were supposed to be oh, right yeah. now. <laughs> and I just remember we did a lot of things. We did not do a lot of things the way that God intended for it to be done. But I remember a mentor she was like if you if you um if you truly desire and want this relationship, you will cut it out. And I remember being at home, I was back home in Jersey Southern Third before, and I called him and I said, no, I came back, and he just knew me. We got back, we were connected. Like, we, we was on like dunk dunk. And I remember getting back, and I told him, I said, I can't do it. Because the conviction was real, all those things were real. And I remember saying, I cannot do this anymore. If, we're gonna, if this is going to work, we, we have to take this off the table. And so I knew in that moment when he was like, okay. I knew in that moment that that was, a God, that was who God wanted me to marry. And I, that's not to say that we didn't fall into temptation during the time when we were trying to be absent, but the Bible tells us to flee. Yes. And so you know, if you get ready to go see your little friend and you take a shower before, you already know what you set yourself up for. You know, when you, all the things, you know what happens when you know. So you have to make a conscious decision to flee. Don't even feed into it. You know, the, the text, like uh, Netflix and chill, a lot of times does not turn into Netflix and chill. Netflix ends up watching you. So it's like making sure, and that's just keeping it real, but that's making sure that you don't put yourself in predicaments where you know you're going to compromise what you are, the goals that you have, the things that you're trying to do, and what God has called you to do. And so when you feel that temptation, Believe you know what flee means? Run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm situated, man. Like run and don't look back. Run, run, run. And so that is how you know you also you have to have you have, and then you have to guard your eyes. You have to guard your ears. We talked about that. Yes. But what you're taking in and what you're pouring out and what you're listening to, because all that will feed your desires. And you want stuff that's going to feed your godly desires, not your fleshly desires. So you have to. Protect you have to have boundaries and you have to protect your eye and ear case as well. Well, no, <laughs> you cannot.
so i'm about to head home i'm just now finishing with my prayer board it's super cute it's like a vision board so in my room i have a pink vision board and a green vision board and i was debating on if i want to get purple but i just got the pink one because I me mean, i just got the green one because it's cute it'll be cute in my room because my room is pink and i learned a lot today i asked the well, y'all gonna see in the video about me asking the questions and the lady answering it, which was super helpful. And I'm always willing to learn about God and stuff because why not? You're supposed to. You're supposed to learn about God. You're supposed to see God every single day so he can help you with your life situations, with yourself, and just, you know, be happy in life. But I'm gonna let y'all win. This is probably the end of the video, but I'm sure I'm sure this when I get home. Well, y'all can see it. it's cute. Don't be zooming on what I'm saying. But anyway that's in this video make sure you give it a huge thumbs up comment more things you would love to see from my youtube channel and i holla <laughs>